In this video, we're going to discuss an important programming technique called backtracking that is a brute force method that can be used to solve several classes of problems in computer science. You're probably used to seeing Sudoku boards that are uh, much larger like this, which are 9x9 nine nine grids. But for this exercise, we're going to start off with a much smaller grid uh, to keep the problem much simpler. Uh, our goal is to try and fill in this 4x4 four four square with the numbers 1 through 4 so that none of the rows, columns, or groups in color here uh, repeat any of the numbers. And what we want to do is we want to establish a set of rules uh, that will allow a computer to solve this problem. Now one way we could solve this problem in the computer is by generating random numbers 1 through 4 and putting them into the empty boxes and then checking to see uh, if we've found a solution. And for a board of this size, that's actually quite a reasonable way of solving this problem. But we're going to take a different approach, and that's called backtracking. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to replace all the blank squares with zeros. And the reason we're doing this is that when we enter the board into a computer, we're going to need numbers to represent each of the squares. And it's convenient to have the blanks represented by zeros, not only for the starting position, but as we progress through the game. So the first thing is to replace all the blanks with zeros. OK, so now we want a systematic way for the computer to go through uh, each of the squares and try different numbers. And what we're going to do is we're going to start at the first zero, and we're going to work our way left to right and then top to bottom, the same way that you read a book. And we're going to have the computer fill in the smallest number possible that will not create any conflict on the board. So here, for example, we can start off by replacing the zero with the number one. Notice that the number one is not in any row or any column here. And it's not already in this green grouping. Next, we're going to go over to the next zero. And we're going to fill this. A one is no good, because there's already a one in the row. Two is no good, because there's a two in the row. So we're going to replace this number with a three. And likewise, we're going to come over here and we're, we're going to try a 1. That doesn't work. We're going to try a 2. That doesn't work. We're going to try a 3. Notice that doesn't work. And then when we try a 4, notice that's in the same column. That doesn't work. And then we're all the way up to 5. 5, of course, is not a value that is permitted in a 4x4 four four Sudoku board. So when we overflow a particular cell, we realize that we have gotten stuck and we need to backtrack. Now what does that mean? Well, what this means is that we're going to take this 5 and replace it back with a 0. And then we're going to go back to the last cell that was not fixed. Fixed By fixed, I mean cells that were already given to us when the uh, board uh, first uh, started. These are the fixed cells right here. So uh, in this case, the 3 was the last cell that was not fixed. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that cell now and we're going to increment it to a 4. And now we're going to continue our uh, algorithm, and we're going to go back to this square here now. We're going to try a 1. That does not work. A 2 does that not work. 3, however, works now. So we're going to fill that in. Now, once we've exhausted an entire row, we're going to go to the beginning of the next row. And we're going to try a 1. That doesn't work. A 2 doesn't work. So we'll put in a 3 here. And then we'll move on, and we'll put a 4 right in here. Now, when we get to here, we only have one choice, and that is to put in a 2. Now, we're all the way down here into the first purple square, and we're going to put in a 1. Here, we're going to put in a 3. And now, we get to this interesting square right here. We're going to try a 1. That's no good. 2 is no good. 3 is no good. And notice that the 4 is no good either. Well, we could put a 5 in, but of course, that causes us to overflow again. And so now we realize, once again, we are stuck. We're following our rule for backtracking, we're going to replace this 5 with a 0. We're going to go to the previous square that was not already given to us at the starting gate. And that's this square right here. 
So we're going to try to increment this square. But look what happens when I try to increment this from a 3 to a 4. Notice that a 4 is illegal here. So then we end up with a 5 over here. Once again, 5 is too large for a 4x4 four four Sudoku board. So following our rules for backtracking, we're going to replace this with a 0. We can't change this value because this was a fixed value given to us at the start. So now we're back to this square over here. And we're going to increment this square. We can't increment it to a 2 or a 3. So now we're going to increment it to a 4. And now we follow our algorithm. This is fixed, so we have nothing to do there. And then we're going to come over here. Can't put a 1, can't put a 2. So we're going to put a 3 here. Now when we come over here, we realize that we can put a 1 here. Over here, we've got three of these rows filled already, so the only choice here is a 1. The only choice here is a 3. And the only choice here is a 2. And now we have finished the Sudoku board by using our algorithm for backtracking.